Happy New Year's. Oh, been one starting, huh? <laughs> I want to mention my videos are for entertainment purposes. It is not medical advice. Um, I am a pal, so I'm sharing my journey. If you have any questions about anything I've done that you may want to do, or talk to your doctor and your ALS team. This is just an entertainment and me sharing my story. Okay. All right. So, woo, what a New Year's. You know, I hope you guys started the New Year's well. Um, we ordered in Chinese, uh, thankfully with COVID restrictions and boy, oh boy. Um, it was true. We had a um, friend, well, family, you know, the kind of friends that you make your family uh, had a um, COVID scare. So we ordered in Chinese and ordered, you know, got some fireworks. My little one did her sparklers and we did some of the fireworks and out. And ooh, we actually had some extra. Like the, the bag we got had a lot of um, like black cats mm -hmm. and their little fire, firecrackers. Um, and um, those of that, you know, it's just like, who wants to hear the pap, 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 pap? It was a lot of stuff. So, uh, gosh, years ago, I had seen a Japanese artist um, for the Houston um, Museum of Fine Arts had done some great like gunpowder um, art. Uh, it was on paper, it was just really wild to see that and I've always wanted to do it. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> now or never, right? So I'm going to do, I've figured out how to do it, I looked it up, I'm not going to do it near my eight year old because she's really into, you know, doing experiments. Um, soap is a hard thing and shampoos and yeah, 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 the child will do anything. So I don't want her to see this, um, you know, it's like one of those things that you need to be a little more executive function ready to do, right? So um, I'm gonna do some acrylic over canvas and gunpowder. So it's kind of interesting, you know, I'm gonna get like one of those little ketchup bottles, um, you know, you can buy the empty ones, um, cut the fireworks and empty them out. And I have a couple paintings in my head I wanna try. So, and then light it up. I'll do it safely. I'll probably have someone to help me just in case um, any malfunctions of the hand, phalanges, hands. So, that's an excitement thing. So, let's see what's happened this week. Tuesday, fell asleep on the couch. I think watching the news. Or, might have been something else. I can't remember. Um, might have been listening to YouTube, actually. <laughs> Doing both, you know. Lots of input. And woke up shortly before midnight to a chainsaw. <laughs> I was like, really? Um, this is 2021. We left that behind, didn't we? Uh, actually, it was a neighbor behind us. Um, our backyards meet. And what I fell asleep was on our sectional. So that's in the family room. So that's faces the backyard. So, um, hmm, you know, they're moving, you know. Uh, you know, turn the other cheek. Don't, you know, I'm not going to complain. But um, then into Wednesday, you know, watching the news, um, news junkie. I try, you know, limiting it now because of all the negativity, but um, watching um, Congress in the House, um, Senate in the House, due for the election. Just, you know, it's kind of neat when you see all that stuff happen. And then, have you ever seen faces that you have seen before that actually shock you? Uh Way before Trump, uh, when Texas was legislating um, the open carry law, um, I mentioned in my last video that I'm a trauma survivor. I'm actually a domestic violence and gun uh, violence survivor. So I felt very passionately about that and the laws. So I joined um, through every town. Well, Newtown was... You know, that you hear all these horrible things. I wasn't as upset about 9-11. Um, it was horrible, yes. But not shocked because of all the attacks that have happened around the world. You know, Kenya, um, Northern Ireland. But the idea of all the presents under the Christmas tree for the kids at Newtown. You know, I wept. 
and wept and wept about that. So needed to stand up. Too many kids have been lost. And with open carry, um, you know, for gun violence survivors like me, that can be triggering, right? Uh, we just need sense. Now, I don't believe in taking people's guns away, though I do believe in having common sense. So I've been to the Texas Capitol um, to be present, to speak out, and to other um, protests and events. The faces of some of the people that broke into the Senate, um, invaded Capitol Hill, were faces I'd seen before. Flags that um, I see around my neighborhood, flags that I've seen around our state. You know, those those groups have um, backings to white supremacy groups. And, you know, you, you look at what happened um, in El Paso, San Diego. You know, there's a lot of violence within some of the people that have the gun rights. And, you know, 76ers, those, those people. <sighs> I don't know, the madness of the misinformation during the pandemic, the economic struggles and the misinformation has killed people. You know, that's really upsetting. But seeing those faces and, you know, that's a scary thing that we all saw. It was, you know, disgrace. It just hit me. I mean, I, you know, lucky me. You know, I'm gonna, not going to look at the cracks. I'm going to look at the positive things of it. You know, it's like with my mom's illness, you know, those held some emotions with me, you know. And then seeing those faces, you know, just triggered. Um, I'm going to use this to integrate any emotions that I have been have access to now. I put myself in counseling, so I'm thankful I have support of every town. You know, it's just, what a wild thing, you know. I'm going to use this year to, you know, authentically live. Um, so I, you know, I was driving up to a different city because my daughter's having a baby. Driving up, you know, seeing a sign that said Trump country. You know, if you voted for him... Yeah, you had the right to vote. I, mean, I didn't. But that, when I wouldn't normally, you know, react to it, just kind of made me, uh, you know, it's like, I got to get over that. So, um, I was listening to different music on my drive. And I have to say, um, the Black Keys, Let's Rock, that's a pretty good driving um, album or CD. You know, uh, ended up listening to Jimi Hendrix. And I was thinking, yeah. You know, how many people, how, you know, during the 60s, that was another wild time with sociopolitical protests. Um, you know, castles made of sand, you know. <sighs> so that's on that, that's enough negativity, right? <laughs> so I'm watching the grand dog. And she's kind of looking around, you know, for mommy and daddy, you know. Hugged my daughter, um. For the last time without a baby in her arms. <laughs> so my daughter and my son-in-law are at the hospital. She's in labor. Um, exciting, exciting, exciting. You know, I just, I am so thankful I am becoming a grandma now when I can actually be um, more active as a grandma. Um, and I can hold her. You know, my arms still work. You know, I'll be here for my daughter. I can order Grubhub. <laughs> I'm horrible. No, 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 no. But just a blessed time. So, um, even though, you know, you see the pandemic, I mean, I'm thankful that my daughter um, can go to school virtually so she can stay in class. You know, that's a blessing, right? You know, they have the new um, type of COVID that is more transmissible in my county. So, mm -hmm. You know, kind of stayed stayed home, gone nowhere, you know, except from house to house. You know, keep the environment closed. So, we'll see. 
I mean, I'm just thankful that my son was able to be there with my daughter, you know, the way the hospitals have been. So I'm just waiting to see my little grandbaby's face. Who's she going to look like? She'll look like herself, but just neat. She's the first of a new generation in our family. So pretty cool, pretty cool. So just a night of waiting um, in a year of, we'll see how this turns. I mean, her birth is going to be a wonderful thing of this year, but let's hope the year gets better. Um, we don't see some of those things we saw in the 60s. Um, there's always hope. So ALS wise, I'm losing more muscle in my legs. I, you know, looked at them today and it's like, eee. um, they're shrinking. Uh, a friend of mine had, um, over Christmas had visited. Uh, he is a retired landscape design person, you know, had done some around the prestigious areas of the city I live in, looked at my house and decided what colors, what plants would work. And he's right. I mean, good eye. So I actually, you know, after all of this stuff being triggered and this and that, um, you know, putting your hands in dirt with gloves on, ugh, the idea of dirt under my nails grosses me out, but, um, <laughs> it's the nursing thing in me, right? <laughs> it's like, ew. Uh, but I was able to plant some of the plants though. I think with the bending and the, um, squats, see, I can still do a squat. That's cool. Isn't it? Uh, 14 months into ALS, I can still squat, uh, though I'll hurt afterwards. I think I did, I think my leg muscles are weaker, so the joints are affected more. So I'm um, doing the exercises that my physical therapist and occupational therapist recommended. So, you know, I had to loosen and my hip joints, so whew, that worked. Um, you know, physical therapy works if you do it. You know, definitely don't be afraid of that. Talk to your doctor about it um, or your ALS team. It's worth it. So, um, did that. Um, thankful I was able to drive here. You know, my left leg is worse than my right leg, so my left ankle doesn't have the same movement. You know, once my right leg gets that way, I won't be able to drive anymore. But hey, this time I was able to drive. Yay! Uh, you know, it's. I'm hoping a bullet train is actually made. That would be really cool. Just choop, jump over. <laughs> jump over for the afternoon. I don't know. So I'm on a process of the whole authentically living, um, dealing with all the stuff in the past, you know, cleaning house to live my life as presently as I can. Because every day you wake up is a blessing. So I don't know what I'm going to do this year. I know that I'm going to do some artwork. Uh, probably... Once I digest all of this, probably get back to some more advocacy. Um, you know, for ALS, also for um, gun safety. Not taking away guns, just making sure things are safe. Um, you know, you see everything going around. You know, I'm hoping that when, when Congress got the event, you think about eight-year-olds in school, how they are, you know, Worst thing was, is when my daughter was in first grade, um, her teacher told me that it was bad because she kept talking, you know, if it's an active shooter, it's like, why do children have to experience this? You know, I know in China, you know, they might, if they don't have access to guns, they'll use knives. I don't know. We need to take care of mental health. We also need to take, make sure that there are universal background checks and that um, weapons that were under the Brady Bill banned need to be banned again um i don't know those people that marched on washington i can tell you the ones that are from my state are well armed <sighs> well, i don't know uh, what will be will be we don't know and there's more good people than there are bad people that's something to know I don't know. You know, you think about, you know, me with ALS, how much of a difference can I make? You know, how long will I be able to talk? How long will I be able to walk? You know, my power chair is coming, so once it, my legs totally give out, at least I'll have that, right? I don't know. I mean, you know, if you, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes, if you think there's a small difference, you can only do something small, and the difference wouldn't matter. Think about a mosquito when you're trying to sleep at night. 
you know, Dalai Lama mentioned that. It's like, it's true. So even if you can't do a lot, you can do something. You know, um, if you're one of the people that have been inside of one of the conspiracy theories, my heart goes out to you. I know this is, you're trying to do for the best and, you know, save the children. Um, no. Keep looking for answers and look for facts and talk. You know, I don't think that everybody that's stuck in those are bad people. I think, you know, like cults, they take the best part of you. I don't know. I mean, 74 million people, you know. Mm. Then you get all the the people, Black Lives Matters and protest against police brutality. I don't know. I mean, people are speaking out. At least they're using their voices, you know. I don't know, but we're all humans. Never mind the conspiracy theory of lizard people. They don't exist. But, you know, we just have to remember we're each humans and we need to respect each other. And the way to get out of this, you know, around is, you know, whether it be the Buddhist version of loving kindness or just love thy neighbor, you know? Um, give another person the space to be who they are. You know, that's my biggest advice. I don't know. It's what I'm trying to do, you know. So, got some brewing things that are going to happen uh, next month. So, I'll keep you guys posted on things. And if I finally get one of my paintings done, I'll share it. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing, you know. It's like, okay, so, can't be a nurse anymore. Well, while I can still do art, let me do art. Cool. Uh, and I hope you have a blessed day. Hug someone you love. Say hi. You know, when things are going rotten like this, people are worried about social media platforms, reaching out and talking to someone, Zoom, making a call, writing an email, definitely talk to people. You know, together we are more than we are when we're alone. So stay in contact with people you care about, you know, and find something that you feel good about today, okay? You know, I'm watching the grand dog. She looks kind of scared that her mommy and daddy are gone. Can't wait to see the baby come in the house. <laughs> well, you guys have a great one. I'll talk to you later.